Hello everybody, welcome back into the Color Gemstone Academy. My name is Paul DC, your instructor, and this is my YouTube channel, Paul DC Gemstones. Now remember, if you have not yet subscribed, do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button and even the like button or the notification bell. And then you'll know every time one of these, uh, these videos drop. Now remember, it says subscribe, but it doesn't cost you a thing, it's absolutely free. Well, those of you who have been watching my lessons might notice this is a little bit of a different look than other lessons that I've done. I'm actually here over the Christmas holidays in the country of Belize. And if you go that way about 100 yards, you can dangle your feet in the Caribbean Sea. And if you go that way about 100 yards, you'll see a big lagoon with mountains in the background. So it's a really beautiful setting if you ever get a chance to visit the country. Well, once again, this week's lesson comes from a viewer request. I'm going to read the question that she asked of me. It is from Diana L. And she says, is it possible to do a lesson all about spinel? How do you tell the difference between a spinel and a ruby? Or is it a ruby? Or is it a type of ruby? Also, is it super rare or valuable? Now, Diana, those are all incredibly insightful questions. Uh, and I'll get to that right now. And, and for those of you that think, well, one of them, of course, Ruby and Spinel are different gemstones. Not so fast. In fact, if you go back to the beginning of time, before there was ever anything called the uh, Gemological Institute of America, the world's foremost authority on gems, basically, in the early days, if something was red, they called it a ruby. If something was blue, they called it a sapphire. And so on, and so on, and so on. Well, there are similarities between the two, but spinel is absolutely not a ruby. But the truth of the matter is, it's sort of a kissing cousin. In fact, spinels are actually mined in some of the same areas where rubies and sapphires come from. But you're going to see as we start looking at the, you know, the chemical composition and all the physical, chemical, and optical properties that it is indeed its own gemstone called spinel. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to notice as I show you a picture of a lot of different varieties of the spinel is that you're going to see it comes in a wide variety of colors. Now, in a sense, so does the corundum. Remember, corundum is the family of gemstones that brings you the sapphire and the ruby. If a corundum is red, it is called a ruby. If it is any other color, including pink, it is called a sapphire. Well, likewise, look up, uh, across on your screen, and I'm gonna leave this picture up for a little bit of time, and you're going to see on the left, violet, like a, a purple uh, spinel. You will see red that looks just like a ruby. Then you see a blue that kind of almost reminds me of a tanzanite. You see kind of a purplish uh, blue or a bluish purple. And then you see one that is orange. Then you look at that little blue down in the lower left-hand corner, and that's more like a cornflower blue, like the most expensive sapphire that there is. And then you will see colorless. And then you will also see another one that's kind of like that, uh, oh, a cornflower flower blue, and then a pink. So you have a lot of different colors that you can get in the spinel. So likewise, Let's get into the nitty gritty, because you might be saying to yourself, well, that's all great, that's all well and good, Paul, but if it's mined in the same areas of ruby and it's red like a ruby, and you said it's a cousin of a ruby, why don't you just call it a ruby? Well, here is why. <clears throat> okay, so what is the difference then between that spinel and that ruby? You know all the times when I do these lessons and I say we're going to get into the boring science of it and talk about the chemical composition and the hardness and all that stuff, I call it the boring stuff. Well, that stuff is really very necessary to know because that's how you distinguish what is a ruby and what is a spinel. And again, I say this all the time, don't feel bad if you don't feel like you know this. Remember, some of the most famous rubies in the world were called rubies for hundreds if not thousands of years until they tested them as recently as the 1800s and they discovered that it was actually spinel. So let's go first to the chemical composition of each of these gemstones in a side-by-side -side comparison. Well, when you look at the ruby, just like the sapphire, it's called aluminum oxide. That is the chemical composition. So if you have aluminum oxide, then you have corundum. 
Now, if you take a look at the spinel, it is magnesium aluminum oxide. So think about that. It's, that's why I call it a cousin. They're both aluminum oxide, but in the case of the spinel, magnesium is the number one ingredient, magnesium aluminum oxide. So let's go to some of those other things that you need to know. What is the crystal structure? And this becomes really important. The crystal structure of a corundum, ruby and sapphire, is called trigonal. And then you get into the uh, spinel, it is cubic. Now there are basically three gemstones that are known as a cubic structure that you, that you really know about. One would be a diamond, the other would be a garnet, and the third is a spinel. So again, if the cubic structure is different than a ruby, then it can't be a ruby. A ruby would be trigonal. But this is where it gets even more interesting and probably the easiest way to distinguish between a ruby and a very fine red spinel. Because of that cubic structure, most gemstones are what we call doubly refractive. Now, I know that's a big fancy word. What does that really mean? That means when light passes through a gemstone, and generally speaking, it's going to come in at a certain speed, and then it splits into two different light uh, wavelengths. And that's how you get a gemstone like a ruby that is kind of pleochroic or, or dichroic. You might look at see some red, some of it's reddish purple. Well, that's in a corundum. It is doubly refractive. In the spinel, it is singularly refractive. So what you're going to see is more just of one true color rather than that kind of mixture of colors that they call dichroic. And you can tell that with a dichroscope and looking at something and then it'll tell you if you see those different colors or you don't. So that's really one of the biggest indicators. But there's more than that. Remember, every gem has a physical, chemical, and optical properties that make it unique. So there's also that thing called the Mohs scale of hardness I always talk about. Now remember the Mohs scale of hardness. It is r literally the ability for one gem to scratch another gem. It's the hardness of the gem the, with the ability to withstand scratching. Well, if you take a look at your uh, ruby, it is a nine on the most scale of hardness. The diamond being a 10, then the ruby is a nine. You take a look at the uh, spinel, it's a little bit more like a topaz uh, or a barrel because it's a seven and a half to an eight on the most scale of hardness. So again, once you test that hardness, then it cannot be a ruby. Now we get into the specific gravity. What is this? Uh, well, the, the toughness is um, going to be a little bit more brittle. Uh, and then again, remember, toughness is the ability to withstand cracking and chipping altogether. So in your uh, ruby, the toughness is rated excellent. So it's an all around very, very durable gemstone. Spinel, a little bit more brittle, easier for that to crack than something that you would see in a ruby. Again, spinel cannot be a ruby. Now we get into that specific gravity. The specific gravity is the heft of that gemstone. And if you take a look at the specific gravity of the corundum, which is ruby and sapphire, it's a four on the, um, on the specific gravity. That means that's the heft, how it feels. Is it heavy? Is it light? Now you take a look at the specific gravity of the spinel, it's about three and a half to 3.6 in that specific gravity. Now, what does that mean? That means if I had two identical looking stones in red, one a ruby, one a spinel, and let's say I did a six millimeter round in both of those stones, the sapphire would weigh a little more than the spinel would. More importantly, what that means if you had the same, um, the same cut, basically you're gonna have more heft in the ruby, less in the spinel. But that means a spinel that is four carats would be bigger than a sapphire or a ruby that is four carats because of the heft. So it's not gonna be as heavy. You're gonna get more volume in a stone. So I know that's a little bit confusing, but that's why I always say it's a, uh, you know, gems, a carat weight is a weight, a measurement of the weight of the gem, not the size of the gem. And that's important to, to keep in mind as well. Uh, then we get into the refractive index. 
Again, in your Ruby, it's a 1.77. In your uh, Spinel, more like 1.72. Very similar, but a little bit more sparkle in the um, Ruby than there would be in the Spinel. Uh, birthstone, uh, and this is important. Uh, the birthstone for uh, Ruby is July. And it's relatively, for Spinel, it's relatively recently become recognized on some birthstone lists for the month of August. So again, in the United States uh, gemstone list, you would now have your Peridot and you would also have your uh, Spinel for the month of August. Okay, so the next question uh, that I know that Diana was asking was, is it super rare and valuable? Well, the answer is yes and no. Uh, I, in my book, when I wrote my uh, Color Gemstone book by Paul DC all those years ago, I was talking specifically about, uh, in the chapter on Spinel, about it's an incredibly beautiful gemstone. A lot of people don't even know that it exists. And I, I talked about it in a part where I talked about rarity, because remember, gems share three traits, beauty, rarity, durability. Well, rarity is certainly a relative term. A D-color flawless diamond is incredibly rare. Diamonds themselves aren't all that rare. But the same goes with spinel. Um, spinel isn't necessary, it's, it's kind of rare, but it's not as expensive as it should be because a lot of people don't know about it. And I said, if somebody were to explain to the public and do a lot more explaining what spinel actually is, there would be so much demand for it and rel relatively little supply, a lot more supply of rubies and sapphires than there is spinel. And I think that it will become a lot more valuable if, if more people knew about this gemstone. So right now it's sort of an affordable uh, luxury. Now let me temper that with something because a lot of times people think of spinel, just like when they think of cubic zirconia, they say, well, isn't that like, uh, like, like a fake diamond? So then they see something called a zircon, which is actually a pretty rare and pretty expensive gemstone. And people think, oh, that's zircon. That's, that's imitation. Not true. Likewise with the spinel. Remember all those class rings? At least I do. I was, I was born in 1960. So I remember my class ring when I got from my high school. It was a red, because our colors were red and gold. Uh, the, the fighting Indians in Penn Hills, <laughs> Pittsburgh, PA. Um, but those were a synthetic form of spinel. So they were able to recreate in a laboratory at a much, much reduced cost what a spinel is. So if you remember those class rings, that was, uh, most of them really were spinel. But these can be incredibly rare and incredibly valuable. In fact, remember when I was giving you all of those uh, you know, specific gravity, you know, the, the heft of a stone? There's actually a variety of, spinel, of red spinel that is incredibly rare, and it's a zinc-rich. Uh, variety of this red spinel and because of that it makes it actually heavier than the ruby and so it is a very expensive and very rare form of the spinel but let me give you a little bit more about that so some of the most famous rubies in all of the world turned out, and again, they thought they were rubies for century, including rubies in the crown jewels of England, turned out to actually be spinel. So let's take a look at some of those because these are literally priceless gemstones. Okay, the first one you're going to look at, that is the crown uh, for the, uh, the Queen of England or the United Kingdom. And that ruby that you see is called the Black Prince Ruby. Now the Black Prince Ruby is a large irregular shaped cabochon, red spinel, weighing 170 carats. It is set above the Cullinan II, which is a huge diamond in the crown jewels. Um, so for years and years and years, and still to this day, they refer to it as the Black Prince's Ruby, but in actually, and I think it was in eight, 1851, they discovered that it was not a ruby at all. In fact, it was a spinel. 
Now, how did it come into being and why is it called the Black Prince Ruby? Well, uh, it's been in the possession of Eng England's rulers since it was given to its namesake, Edward of Woodstock in 1367. And he was known as the Black Prince and he was, he was actually the heir to the throne of, uh, I think it was King Edward III maybe, something like that. He's the heir to the throne, but uh, he predeceased his father. So his father was still alive when he died. So then the crown eventually was passed to his eldest son. Um, and that's just the way it works in, in England. But anyway, uh, the Black Prince, as Edward Woodstock was known, was a, a knight and a particularly uh, brutal, uh, very, very good at, in, in battle. And at the end of one of the military campaigns in the Hundred Years' War, uh, he received in payment that spinel, what they thought was a ruby, and that became known as the Black Prince's Ruby, and it is still in the crown jewels in that crown uh, today. And then there's something called the Timur Ruby. Now, if you take a look at this one, this is also incredibly interesting. And there was an original ruler by the name of Timur, and uh, Timur, Timur, and he um, founded the Timurian uh, dynasty. And it was believed to be a ruby until 1851, named after Timur, the founder of the Timur Empire. It is now part of the Critish, uh, British crown jewels, and you can see that on display and see what another really famous spinel is, is all about. So you find this really throughout history where they thought something was a sapphire turned out to be something else, and including when they were searching for um, sapphires in Tanzania. That is when really they discovered that incredible blue stone called uh, Tanzanite, which was then called the poor man's sapphire back in the day. But that's going to wrap up our lesson on Spinel. Diana, I hope that it answered all of your questions. I hope that all of you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Remember, subscribe doesn't mean it costs anything. It's absolutely free. But the more subscribers I get, the better I can serve you with more and more of these videos. So thank you so much for watching. Share with your friends if you want to. And don't forget, it will be next Saturday at 10 a.m. when my next lesson will be dropping. Thanks for watching, everybody.